Thanks, Omar. So look, I will present with it in mind that this is going to be distributed to people who may have a wide set of interests. So um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Garrod, Garrod McCarthy, and I am from University College Cork, National University of Ireland. So we are one of the network of national universities of Ireland. There are four of us. So Ireland is a small country, five million people, and we have only seven universities. Um, all of these universities are government controlled, so they're all held to a very high standard in terms of delivery and performance. Um, at the moment, we don't have any private universities in Ireland. So more specifically, I work for our Faculty of Medicine and Health at UCC. Um, so to start broad, because I'm, I'm aware that some of you may not be too familiar with Ireland. So just to give you a little quick geographical background, you can see here the red pin drop is where Cork is located. Um, the island of Ireland next to the United Kingdom, we're very um, close in terms of connectivity. Um, there are dozens of flights every day where you can fly from Cork or from anywhere in Ireland to the UK, to France, to Germany, to Spain, to the Netherlands, a very, very strong connectivity there. Um, in fact, Ireland is a really, really globalized country. And I think people don't always get that or they're not aware of that. Um, we are now the only English speaking country in the European Union, because as you know, the UK has followed this path. So now the only English speaking country in the European Union. We're a highly, highly globalized economy. Um, in fact, if you look at any, if you Google any of the globalization lists or rankings or indexes, you will see that Ireland always features in one of the top five most globalized countries in the world. Um, we have huge connectivity in terms of foreign direct investments. The Americans especially invest billions of dollars in Ireland every year. And just to give you a quite a, a startling statistic, for a small country like Ireland, the USA has more foreign direct investment in Ireland than Brazil, China, India and Russia combined. So that's a fairly mind blowing fact. And they invest hugely here in the IT sector, in the pharmaceutical sector, which I'll show you in a moment. So the capital city of Ireland is Dublin, about a million people, one and a half million people. It's located on the East Coast. And then the second largest city and my city is Cork about quarter of a million people located in Cork. Cork is a beautiful city. It's a very vibrant city. It has a very multicultural feel to it because it's a student city. We have approximately 50,000 students in the city which of quarter of a million. So one in five people walking on the streets in Cork is a student. We also have big, big companies that are based here and lots of people and young people come from all over the world to work with them. For example, Apple has their European headquarters in Cork, employs thousands of people, including lots of graduates from UCC. We also have a lot of the big pharmaceutical companies, the big gaming companies. If you play video games like Blizzard have their European headquarters here. So it's a very nice city. It's a very dynamic city, lots of cafes, restaurants, music and art, many things that you could do. But I think a beautiful thing about Cork is that in 10 minutes you can be outside of the city and you can be into the beautiful countryside. You can see our castles and our forests and our beaches. So you get the urban lifestyle and then really quickly and conveniently you can get out there to walk in the countryside and visit our culture, our castles, you know, Game of Thrones, if anybody has watched it, is, is um, recorded in Ireland. So it does really have that special feel to it. So Cork is certainly a place that you should think about. And something I would ask you today, please, is, you know, I will be telling you a lot about Cork and about UCC. And of course, I'm a little bit biased because I live here, I'm from here, I work here. But I would, I would invite you to do your own independent research about Cork, about Ireland, about UCC, and I can guarantee you will be very, very pleasantly surprised. 
Um, in Cork, we're very proud. And we look at the map of Ireland and this is how we see it. So as you can see, the region of Cork is located in the south. And then when we look outside of it to the rest of Ireland, we refer to that as not Cork. Of course, we're joking, not joking. But no, it's a very proud tradition and a proud place in Cork. And sometimes we refer to ourselves as the real capital of Ireland because we're very competitive with the real capital, which is Dublin. So as I told you, lots of industries based here, you know, financial services, if you like business, uh, pharmaceuticals, if you like chemistry and those areas, Apple, if you like IT and all of that study. Um, and the reason I'm telling you about this is because we have really strong connections with these in our university and all of our students who study at UCC go out to work at these companies. So, for example, if you're studying an undergraduate degree or a bachelor degree at UCC, usually in your third year, you will go into one of these companies for a minimum of six months to do work experience and you get paid during this. And then you come back and you finish your degree. And by the time you graduate, you are a really sought after employee. All of these companies want you. So if you did your work placement with them, most of them want you to come back after you finish studying. But also in the USA, in Asia, in the Middle East, around Europe, Irish graduates are really, really sought after because we have this work experience. And really, when graduates finish from UCC, they're ready for work, they're ready academically, and they're ready for the world because we've built professionals and we build your confidence. So by the time you graduate for UCC, lots of people will want to employ you. And I think that's an important message to give. Um, this is our campus, which is located in the city centre. It's a very old campus. It's a very beautiful campus. But of course, you can see in the middle is the old part. We now have many, many modern buildings and facilities. And up on the top right hand corner, you can see our sports facilities, which are really fantastic. So we want our students to have a good work and life balance. And in Cork, you can have that because all of our accommodation is located around the university. So you will have plenty of spare time if you want to join a club, whatever sport you like, there's something there for you. If you enjoy debating or philosophy or the environment or politics, we also have clubs and societies for that where you can have your hobbies outside of your day to day study. So we really promote our students to have that balance. And as a result, we have a really successful student body. We have a very happy student body. And about two years ago, Ireland was voted as the top place for satisfaction for international students to study in Europe. So students, international students studying in Ireland are happy and a happy student is a successful student. So they really go hand in hand. So I know some of you are thinking about the USA, about New York, about London, about Sydney. And of course, these are great places. But I want you to think very carefully about what is a good match for you as a student. Because as I said, if you're not a happy student, you won't be a successful student. So really think carefully about the type of place you want to study, the size of that place, the, the campus of that place, the location of that place are all very important things. So our, our campus is city centre, like I said. Um, within 10 minutes, you can be walking into the main shopping and restaurant and food areas of the city. So everything is really convenient. You don't need to take taxis or trains or buses. You don't even really need a bicycle. If you've got two strong serviceable pair of legs, that will really support you getting from your accommodation to the campus, to the sports facilities, to the city centre. You can pretty much walk everywhere you need to go in UCC. So just to give you an idea, this is our original building. We call it the Quadrangle, or as a lot of our internationals like to call it, Hogwarts. So this was more than 170 years ago, built by Queen Victoria. Um, this was built when Ireland was part of the United Kingdom. We became independent in 1922. So now we changed the name to University College Cork. And by the way, we have a really active Harry Potter society. So if you want to join that, you can. Um, but it is a beautiful campus and it does feel like a place of learning and you will feel special. I've walked, I've studied here, I've walked here for a long time and it does feel like a really good place to study. 
We have more than 22,000 students on our campus. So that's a pretty big number by even any international standards. So we are a big university. Um, last year, more than 3,500 of those students were international and they came from 104 different countries. So again, a really big and vibrant mix. So that's around 20% of our campus we would class as being international. And really all the research said that a 2080 balance of international to local is a really good and healthy mix to have at the third level sector. It's a little bit different at secondary and high school, but really at third level, that's a really good mix and that makes sure that you get a really good real experience in Ireland by having that mix. We're ranked in the top 2% um, globally. Uh, I think more importantly, we have a lot of subjects which are ranked in the top 100 in the world. They include pharmacy, uh, nursing and midwifery, uh, psychology, environmental science, law, um, electrical and electronic engineering. So a, a big broad spectrum of subjects rank really highly in the world. So we are a very, very good university with a good reputation. Um, we have four faculties or what we call colleges within the university. And the one that I work for, the College of Medicine and Health, we have dentistry, medicine, nursing, pharmacy, a lot of options. And then you also see we've arts and humanities, we've business and law, we've science and engineering. So we really are a comprehensive university with many, many subject areas on offer for you. We have lots of quite well-known, successful and famous people who graduated from UCC. Um, you will see one of the pictures looks a bit suspicious compared to the other one. That's because he is um, dead a long time now, but he was our first professor of mathematics and his name was Professor George Boole. Um, for any of you who are big into mathematics or even for any of you who are the owner of a smart device, we should be saying thank you to George Boole because George Boole is the forefather of the information age. Um, some of you may have heard of Boolean logic or Boolean algebra. All of this based the foundation for the digital age that we have today. We all know 10110, the binary code. It is all his ideas and all his thoughts that led to that. So he was our first professor of mathematics. You can also see that we have many, many successful people, both uh, male and female, which is great. We're an equal opportunities university. We really want um, our males and female students to do equally well. Um, across a broad range of technology, we see Professor of Physics at MIT, Walt Disney. We see a consultant paediatrician for the Great Ormond Street, one of the greatest children's hospital in the world. We have somebody with CNN. So um, lots of lots of really good opportunities. So the message here is if you get your degree from UCC, big things can happen in your life afterwards. Um, as I mentioned to you already, we really encourage our students to get involved. And this is an example of some of what our medicine and health students do. So, for example, down in the bottom middle picture, these are our um, medicine students. Every year they raise some money. They do all of this independently from the university and they go to poorer countries in rural Africa and they bring money with them. They bring equipment with them. They help to set up clinics. They help with building schools and they really are very, very active in how they go out there and build themselves as human beings. So that's very important. We have a couple of Olympic champions currently studying medicine at our university. These guys won the silver medal in the last Olympic Games. They also have the gold medal world champions. They are studying medicine at UCC. So we do develop all of the human being, not just the student. Research, I won't talk about too much to you today, but of course, What's important for you to know is all of our lecturers and professors at UCC are very active around research. So they're doing lots of research and in the classroom that comes down to you because they're telling you about their research in their classes. So you know exactly what is happening in the cutting edge of all of those areas that you are learning about because your professors and your teachers are all very actively researching. So that's a very important thing. So our Faculty of Medicine and Health, so we have our university and then we have our four faculties like you saw, and then inside of the faculties or the colleges, we have schools. 
So in the Faculty of Medicine and Health, we have the schools that you can see. Medicine, nursing, public health. Public health is really important now, guys. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Public health has never been so important. In public health, you'll study about the spread of diseases, how to manage the spread of those diseases, all of the things about contact tracing, really important. So you'll learn about that. But not only that, you'll learn about, um, you know, the health of humans, how to promote health for people, things around obesity, around smoking, all of those kind of things. So public health is an area that maybe wasn't so much on the radar for students in the past. I would really look at that carefully now if you're thinking about a career going forward. Pharmacy, very important, dentistry, and clinical therapies. And what I mean by clinical therapies, I'm talking about physiotherapy, speech and language therapy, occupational therapy. There are all of these therapy options for people who've had injuries or getting back into the workplace or just want to promote fitness in general. So really good options there. So these are all of our schools. Um, these are all of the programs, and I'm happy to give you this um, presentation afterwards. So you're very welcome to take a look at these slides in more detail and you can contact me to get more information. But these are some of the undergraduate programs that you can apply for tomorrow if you would like to come and do your degree at UCC. The five year med medicine program is really important. Um, when UCC was created in 1845, more than 170 years ago, nearly 180 years ago, it was set up to teach doctors. And the first graduates to come out of UCC were all doctors. So we've been teaching medicine for a long, long time. So I think we do a pretty good job of it now. And we have educated doctors not only in Ireland, but all over the world. Uh, doctors have come in from the Middle East region, from USA, Canada, from Singapore, Malaysia, from India. People have come from all over the world to study our medicine programs. So if you were graduating out of your school and whether that's A-levels or IB or something like that, then you will have the opportunity to apply directly into our medicine program when you graduate. And as you can see, it is a five year program. And because our program is vetted and accredited by the World Federation of Medical Education, you really should have no problem using it all over the world. Doctors who graduated in Ireland are very, very sought after around the world. And an interesting statistic for you is um, Ireland is the number one destination for Canadian students to study medicine outside of Canada. And that's because we have a long relationship with them. But for Canadian students, you know, hundreds of Canadian students come to Ireland every year to study medicine because they really know the quality of the programs that are there. Um, it's a five year program, like I told you, and I guess we break it into two parts. And the first part we call preclinical, which would be year one and two. And then the second part are the clinical years, which is year three, four and five. Um, now, we, I say that years one and two are preclinical. In fact, even in your first year, you will already be going out to clinics. You will already be seeing patients and shadowing and observing. You won't be dealing with patients just yet. We need to train you professionally before that and clinically, but you will be observing what doctors are doing and you will be learning from them. And that's why Ireland is really famous. This early clinical exposure is something that is really important and what really marks UCC out from other medical schools around the world. But then at the end of your second year, you will do your clinical commencement ceremony. So now you will get your white coat. Now we want you really to act and feel like a doctor. So for the next three years, years three, four and five, the majority of your education will be in the hospitals. It will be with the other senior doctors, you will be observing, and now you will be talking to patients. So by the time you have finished your five years, you will be so comfortable. 
speaking with patients and dealing with patients that it will be no problem to you. And you will also have the competencies. You will know the basics of biochemistry and physiology, pharmacology. You will know about the human body. You will know about how drugs work on the human body and how to treat problems. You will be very confident and professional because we have professional subjects as well, which help you to be a professional doctor, how to speak to a patient. And how we help you with that is simulation. And simulation is something that's really, really important to us. And if you look at this image here on the top left hand corner, this is our simulation center. And this is where we bring you in to start to feel really like a doctor. So it's almost like fake hospital wards that you will work in. It looks like you're in a real hospital. The only thing that's a little bit different is if there's a one way mirror and there are microphones and cameras because we'll be observing what you do and we'll be giving you instructions. Now we won't force you to do it on your own. That's cruel. We will, but we will be getting you to work in small groups. So you and a small group of students will work on a simulated situation. And there are two ways for this to happen. Number one, you'll work with a real person, an actor. So we pay actors to come in and to act like they're a patient and they will give you some symptoms, some problems, and you as a group will have to diagnose them and help them. Or we also have mannequins or dummies that are highly censored and you will work with them. So for example, if we want you to try taking blood or if we want you to try a simulation for putting a feeding tube into the patient's mouth, we won't do that on the actor just yet, that would be cruel, but we will do that on the mannequin. And these are highly censored. So for example, if you put the tube in the wrong one, if you put it in the breathing tube as opposed to the feeding tube, then maybe the person behind the glass mirror can trigger a cardiac arrest to see how you react and how you and your other fellow students react. So we're testing you in that. We're testing you in emergency situations, in critical situations. And then afterwards, we all go into a debrief room. And this is where you talk about what just happened with your classmates. Now, we will never tell you what we did you did wrong. We will always advise you what you could have done better. And this sort of reflective learning, small group learning is so beneficial to students. I meet international students all the time. They're very happy with how it goes. Um, down on the bottom right hand corner, we have one of our laboratories. This is our anatomy laboratory. Um, at UCC, we still use cadavers. We still work on the body of people who donated their bodies to science. So you do get a really, really um, almost old fashioned, but very authentic exposure to the study of medicine and the study of the human body. So really world class high tech facilities there for you at UCC. And these are our teaching hospitals. And like I said to you before, Cork is a walking city. All of these are close by. So the top picture, which is called the Bon Secours Hospital, is quite a new hospital. It's a private hospital. If you can look at the trees that are on the right hand side of that building, that is the Brookfield Health Sciences Complex, this location here where you will be based for your classes and for your study. So they're very close by. So our teaching hospitals are really, really close to the campus. Down in the bottom right hand corner, we have Cork University Hospital. And in fact, this is the largest health campus in all of Ireland. So again, it's 10 minutes walk from the university. Again, you are now being exposed to a huge range of patients with a huge range of problems. Um, as I said, Cork is an ethnically diverse city, so you'll see a lot of different types of patients, different ages, different ethnicities, and you will get to see maybe some diseases or issues that are prevalent in some ethnicities more than others. So you get a really wide experience so that no matter what country in the world you work, you will have benefited from this experience. Our clinical skills is really important. This is actually a real group of students with a real professor. I know him, he's Professor Robert Gaffney, um, who teaches in our School of Medicine. And when you come into first year, you will be assigned a mentor. And this mentor will be both your academic mentor, but also your personal and professional mentor. And they will help you through the full 
um, five years of your program in medicine. So if you have a study problem or an exam problem, academic problem, they will help you. If you're having personal problems like stress or something like that, they will help you. And even if you don't go to them, they know to identify if you're having problems, they will go to you. And again, a great thing about UCC is that because this mentor mentorship and support is so strong, very, very few of our students drop out of medicine. So if you start medicine at UCC, you will finish medicine at UCC. And should I say that this mentorship and this support extends to all of our programs in medicine and health, not just medicine. It's the same for dentistry. It's the same for pharmacy. It's the same for nursing, for public health and for clinical therapies. Um, we are here to support you. We want you to succeed and we want you to graduate as a successful doctor or pharmacist or dentist, whatever it is. And just to prove that it's not only me telling you this, um, recently the Washington Post newspaper in the USA, a very widely read newspaper, did a publication about US students going overseas to study medicine. And they specifically talked about University College in Cork as being a good place to get this mentorship that we invest in support services that help students to succeed academically and personally, as I just explained. We didn't pay them to write this article. I just happened to see it by accident. So so that that's good. And I think that's an objective look of what I'm just trying to explain to you now. Um, I talked about our simulation and our facilities. You can see here on the bottom right hand corner, that's not a real person in the bed. It's one of our mannequins. The top middle picture is one of our actors. Um, so you get to work with all of these people. And then in the other pictures, you're looking at clinical skills and showing you how to do particular things. On the top right hand corner, they're showing you how to take blood effectively, which can be a very difficult thing to do. But they're teaching you that even from your first year. We have lots of partners, universities all around the world, in the USA, throughout Asia, in Europe. So every year we advise students, usually in their third or their fourth year, to go to one of our partner medical schools during the summer months just to do some placement and some experience. So for example, in the USA, they go to the Cleveland Clinic, the Mayo Clinic, um, you know, the University of Pennsylvania. There are lots of um, opportunities there for you to go and experience another country in another medical school for maybe one month or something like that in your third or fourth year. Um, this looks a bit complicated, but uh, let me just explain it quickly. So this is our medical licensing exams. So lots of our students who study medicine, especially the international students, are coming from USA, Canada, Singapore, um, Middle East, um, Malaysia, and many of them want to go home after they finish their medical study. But of course, when you return home, you need to do an internship in your home country, or you can do an internship in Ireland. But for the students who want to do an internship a, um, abroad, we prepare you for those exams. So for example, the students who want to go to the USA, we do the United States medical licensing exams with them. And we have a really good pass rate with these exams. About 94% of our students who do the United States medical licensing exams successfully complete them. That's a really high number. So we start preparing you for that in your third year. And the reason we're so successful is we do a lot of pre-screening, we do a lot of preparation, and we do a lot of simulated exams. So by the time you are doing the real exam in third year, which is the first step of the process, you will already have done three, maybe four simulated exams to practice it. And then when we're satisfied that everybody has a really good chance to pass it, then we allow the students to do it. And as you can see from the graph on the left hand side, and this was an example from one of the years, I think 2014, everyone above the red dotted line successfully got their USMLEs. So 95% of people. Unfortunately, a couple of students who probably weren't fully engaged or prepared didn't, didn't pass it, but they can always repeat it again at a later date. So I spoke about internships. So when you finish your full five years of study of medicine, you're still not officially a doctor and you will need to do an internship 
before you can get your certificate, which says I am now a doctor officially. And you can stay in Ireland, like I said, to do the one year internship, or you can go to the UK with the UK Foundation program in the NHS, or you can go to the CARMS, which is the Canadian Medical um, Board or the USMLE, as I described. So there are plenty of options for our graduates for where they would like to do their internship. And there's a different name for internship depending on the country. Some of them call it fellowship, some of them call it residency, some of them call it housemanship. So that's really, um, that's really a kind of overview of the medicine program there for you today. Now, unless if I have any questions that somebody would like to ask, I can just proceed on with a couple of the other programs. So I think that's OK. So look, we can keep questions until afterwards or certainly we can follow up with questions to my email at a later date. So dentistry. So everything I have described to you in medicine is very similar for dentistry. Um, it's a there's five year option. There's a four year option. Um, the only thing about dentistry is you don't need to do an internship at the end of it all. Um, entry requirements onto these programmes, again, we do accept A-levels, we do accept IB. What will be really important is chemistry. So, you know, if you're doing A-levels, you know, you would need to be getting an A minimum um, in your chemistry A-levels. If you're doing the IB curriculum, you would want to be doing higher level chemistry and you would want to get a minimum of six. So chemistry is always really important. And then from physics and biology and mathematics, from those three subjects, you should have two of those. So if you're doing three A-levels, one is in chemistry, one is in biology, one is in mathematics, that's good enough for us. And it's the same for your IB programme. You should have three from those four subjects. So our dental school is very old for a dental school. It's more than 100 years old. Um, you can see the picture at the bottom. We're currently building a new science park at UCC, which is again about 10 minutes from the original campus. And on this new science park will be our new dental school and hospital. So this is a really exciting period. If you come to study in 2021 or 2022 into dentistry, you will be spending a good part of your degree in this new building because we hope it to be opened in 2023. And we've lots of modern facilities here again, a very similar things that I showed you from the medicine thing. We have the clinical simulation units within the dental school and hospital. And I think a really good thing, and I hear back from international students all of the time, is the dental school is a really, really strong sense of community and family and kinship. And I've be there and I, I can see that the professors and the students, they speak to each other like they're equal to each other. They're very friendly and supportive of each other. So there really is a good, positive, friendly atmosphere in the dental school. So I won't spend too much about talking about these, but needless to say, all of the good things about the School of Medicine can be transferred across to the School of Dentistry. You will be developed professionally, academically, and, and in terms of clinical skills, where you will have the function You'll be practicing on real patients from your third year. You'll have to manage your own appointments book, which you'll have your own station, your own um, dentist chair and your own computer and appointment system. So you'll have to manage all of that from your third year. So you're being given a very, very um, responsible job from early days. But that's great because by the end of five years, you will be a real dentist. You will feel like a real dentist and you will feel confident and competent. Our School of Pharmacy is another really good opportunity. So I think enough students don't consider pharmacy as a good option. Remember, pharmacy now is at the cutting edge of discovering a vaccine for COVID-19. Pharmacy is always going to be really important. And there are a few different pathways you can take by studying a pharmacy degree. You can go and work in a hospital and you can give drugs to patients and you can work in the laboratories and test the clinics um, of 
drug delivery on patients and how that works. You can open your own pharmacy shop and you can work in community pharmacy or you can work in the pharmaceutical industry. And as I showed you earlier, Ireland has huge, huge opportunities in the pharmaceutical industry. And in fact, Cork is one of the most important pharmaceutical hubs in all of Europe. So you have great opportunities. So if you come in to study the pharmacy program, it's a five year program and it's an integrated bachelor degree and pharmacy degree. And what that means is you study for five years and by the time you exit, you have both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in pharmacy. And included in that five years, you have one year minimum of work placement. And this is guaranteed and you will be paid during this work placement. Um, our pharmacy school ranks really highly. A lot of that is because we have such strong links with the pharmaceutical industry and we do a lot of research for them. So if you come and study pharmacy at UCC, I guarantee you, you will get a job at the end of it. So I did a survey of the graduates from our pharmacy program for the last three years and 100% of students are now working in the pharmaceutical area. They're either working in the pharmaceutical industry or in clinical pharmacy in a hospital or community pharmacy where they're working in a pharmacy shop or they open with their own pharmacy shop, but they're all working in pharmacy. So there are great opportunities here. One thing that's really important here at the bottom of this slide is QP status. When you graduate for pharmacy, you will also get a certificate giving you QP status, which is qualified person status. And this means that you are licensed all over Europe to um, sign the licenses for new drugs that are being developed. So this is a really important job. If you're in the pharmacy industry, you are the person in that company who is signing about these drugs can now be available. And it's a very important job. Again, lots of people lots of companies looking for graduates who do have QP status. So the starting salary for people graduating from pharmacy is a minimum of 50,000 euros a year, and that will grow very rapidly. And that's just to give you an idea of the five years. And you can see in the fourth year and the fifth year is where the majority of your work placement will happen. And it's a minimum of one year, but can be even more of that. And in first year, second year and third year, you will do small bits of work experience and small bits of clinical placement, maybe two weeks or one week or a few days. So you, you will be exposed to it before fourth year. The pharmacy industry I talked about, it's really important in Ireland and um, lots and lots of job opportunities, especially here in Cork. The School of Nursing and Midwifery, and I'll go through this one quickly. Our School of Nursing and Midwifery is based in the same building as the School of Medicine. Um, it's a four year program. It also gives you great clinical experience in your third year and in your fourth year. You will be spending most of your time in the hospital, especially in your fourth year, and then you will be paid as a junior nurse from that point. So we have lots of um, options for nursing and it's a really highly ranked school again, top 100 in the world, but you can do general nursing or you can do integrated children and in general nursing or intellectual disability or mental health nursing or midwifery. So these are all really good options there for you. So we do have some scholarships available. So for example, and I can talk with you more if you've questions regarding the fees. So for example, the cost of a pharmacy program is 20,000 euros per year. But if you have good English language, if you have good scores from your school, we will then do an interview and you have a very good chance to qualify for the 25% excellence scholarship. We um, medicine and dentistry has such high demand, so there aren't so many scholarships available there, but there are some small scholarships available and also nursing does have some good scholarships available. So I think that is really um, a kind of a well, maybe not so quick, but it felt quick for me. There's a lot to say um, across the programs that are available in UCC. Of course, we have an occupational therapy program, which is four years, um, quite limited number of places for international students to apply. But if you have any further questions for me, 
please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is here on this slide, garrod.mccarthy at ucc.ie. I would be very happy to follow up with some of you on a one-to-one -one basis later. Perhaps you or your guidance counsellors or Lena or your parents would like to get some more information about some of the programmes. I would be very happy to set up a Zoom meeting or a Teams meeting or something um, additionally to, to discuss it further with you and to discuss more about entry requirements, number of places that are available, timelines, etc. So thank you for listening to me today and I look forward to dealing with you all in the future.